Hey everybody, what's happening? Welcome back to my kitchen. And as you know, we had a really big harvest of our Anna apples this year. And you can only eat so many fresh apples, right? So sooner or later, you have to do something else with them. One thing you'll find if you take growing your own food seriously is that you'll have to be more creative in how you use it because you're gonna get a lot of things that ripen around the same time and you're gonna have a surplus of one item. But you don't just wanna use it, right? You wanna make it last throughout the year. It could be garlic, could be onions, could be potatoes, could be apples. So what we will do is we'll eat these fresh for quite a while. We'll save the really hard ones uh, and we'll take some of the other ones and we'll preserve them and can them. Apple pie filling. You can use it on anything. You can put it in pies, you can put it in bread, you can put it on cottage cheese, you can put it in yogurt, you name it. Be creative with it. It's really just homemade applesauce. It's super healthy, came right from your backyard and you know what's in it, right? I had to save you the agony of that chewing so I cut it out, right? Like they say, an apple a day keeps the doctor away and there's a reason for it. They're full of nutrients, they're full of minerals, they're full of fiber. Eat the skin if you can. It's the best part of the apple. For making apple pie filling or applesauce, you definitely want to remove the skin. Otherwise it curls up and shrivels up and gets hard and it's really not going to be a fan favorite, okay? Today we're going to show you how to make homemade applesauce, homemade apple pie filling, whatever you want to call it. It's good. You're going to want to have a big stockpile of apples. These are the Anna apples we've had in cold storage for about the last two months. Uh, we've been eating them quite a bit. We'll save any of these really beautiful, bigger, rock hard ones. We'll pull out what we need from those for fresh apples. And then we will preserve and can these smaller ones that do not store well. So right off the bat, we're going to go through all of these apples here. There's about 40 pounds there. And we're going to take out all these really beautiful ones and we're going to put those back in cold storage we'll eat those as fresh all of these really ripe ones uh, smaller medium size if you see these little dimples up here uh, that's the sugars breaking down the apples ripening even more we're going to preserve and can those they'll make great apple pie filling or applesauce ones like these that are damaged we will compost them and i won't bore you with the sorting process but we're going to do that first and then we're going to wash and clean all these apples in a water and vinegar solution what kind of vinegar you think i should use it doesn't really matter but we're going to use white vinegar uh, and save our apple cider vinegar for eating all right, something else that we're going to need is dark brown sugar. Always use brown sugar. It gives it way more flavor. It has many, many more nutrients in it than bleached white sugar. Please, always use your brown sugar, okay? We're also going to need cinnamon. And you're going to need vanilla. I like to add cinnamon, obviously, with apples. That's a normal thing to add. But uh, vanilla and a really good quality vanilla, if you have one. Our friend Kathy made this, uh, our neighbor, and gave it to us. So this is really tasty. Uh, you're going to need some vanilla extract. We're also going to need some lemons. So you definitely want a citric acid whenever you can something because this helps preserve it. The acids help keep it from going bad uh, and it just gives it a really nice crispy flavor. So get yourself some lemons and you're gonna need all that juice. And don't forget, if you grow your own lemons and your own fruit like we do here, please use some of that rind. Add some of that rind into the apple pie, applesauce mixture, and it gives it such a fresh, delicious flavor. You can't go wrong. All right, here's one of the easiest ways to deal with all these apples and getting them clean. Simply take a big tote bin and start going through your apples and stick all your apples in this tote bin. And then you're gonna use this tote bin to rinse all your apples at once. Put the lid on, drain it a couple of times, rinse it, and you're good to go. And then we'll get to peeling and cutting them. We're gonna add about a quarter of a cup of distilled vinegar to this mixture. And what that'll do is that'll kill any germs in there, kill any bacteria. It's a really good sterilization agent. The 
first thing I want to do is add half of a cup of lemon juice to two cups of water. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that in the pot where I'm gonna put my cut up apples. That's the pot that I'm gonna cook them in. I wanna add the lemon water now because it'll keep the apples from oxidizing as much and turning brown. The type of apple you're gonna be using depends on how much sugar you're gonna to wanna to use. I'm using an Anna apple, which is a nice Swedish tart apple. It's got a good sweet flavor to it, so it doesn't need as much sugar as say a Pippin or a Granny Smith. So for my recipe, I'm gonna use seven cups of sliced apples to three quarters of a cup of sugar, one teaspoon of cinnamon. So however many you do, just multiply that and you're good to go. If you're using something like a Granny Smith or a Pippin, I would use seven cups of sliced apples to one cup of sugar, one teaspoon of cinnamon. You can also use nutmeg as well, but don't overdo it. Uh, you don't want that to be in your face and some people get turned off by way too much spice. So one teaspoon per seven cups works great. Let me show you how easy this is. It's just time consuming. Try to get everything ready, right? So get your ingredients ready, get your jars ready, wash and wash all your jars with soapy hot water. Put your jars in the oven to sterilize them for 20 minutes at 230 degrees. They're sterilized awesome that way. It's super easy and go from there, right? The key with making this is do not let your apples burn in the pot when you're making it, okay? So you gotta continuously stir it. If it's getting too thick too early, add some more water, right? And if you're gonna make pie filling, that works better anyway, because you get more of the glaze or the gel or whatever you wanna call it, right? The non-fruit part. So without further ado, time to get busy, right? I'm sure everybody has one of these, but they're super handy to have in times like this. Uh, it's basically just an apple core and slicer. Works really, really well. It saves you some time, but you do have to peel them first. Make our lives easy, pull out a bunch at one time. And we need a compost container. So get that ready. Just enjoy the process. So we're gonna peel a bunch of them and then we're gonna slice them. All right, now that that's full, I'm gonna add four more cups of water to those apples and another half cup of lemon juice. We're gonna turn that on. It's gonna take a while. So while we're doing that, we need to fill up that big pot full of water. That's what we're gonna seal our canning jars in and we need to get all of these jars into the oven. So we're gonna put these jars in the oven at 230 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 minutes. You wanna make sure that you have those jars in there for 20 minutes at 230 degrees. So we're gonna overheat this. We're gonna put it at 245. That way when we open the door of the oven, a lot of hot air is gonna escape. We're gonna put our jars in, close the door, Put the temperature to 230, and once it gets to 230, start your timer. You gotta do it for 20 minutes to properly sterilize those jars after you wash them with soap and water, okay? So I have 20 cups of apples in that blue pot. So we're gonna put in two cups of brown sugar. I think that's plenty. Those apples are great. We don't wanna just have sugar in there. So we're gonna put this in there and cook it off. I've measured into here two teaspoons of cinnamon and one teaspoon of nutmeg, and we're gonna add that now. I like to use these wooden spoons with an edge on them. It's easy to get things going, and you just wanna be careful. Take your time, don't make a big mess. Take your time and just mix this all in. You wanna incorporate everything in here. This will all cook down. It's gonna cook for probably two hours, hour and a half. See how these cook. They're going to take longer than usual. Like I said, I usually cut these into little pieces, but then it just comes out like applesauce. I kind of want to have more texture this time. So we're going to cook these down into slices. While we wait for that, we're going to fill up this massive pot full of water and get that boiling. Our oven is on and we're waiting for that to preheat. It'll beep when it's ready.
The nice thing about doing this is in about an hour, the whole house is gonna smell like the fall. An apple pie, an apple cider. It's just gonna be great. Put the lids on them, it keeps the heat in, heats up quicker, but you will have to keep an eye on both of them so they don't boil over, and especially on this one, so it doesn't burn and scald on the bottom. You definitely don't want it to scorch the bottom. It starts to roll, do a rolling boil. Take your lid off, give it a stir. Uh, when the apples start to get the consistency that you like in terms of the softness, then you want to leave this lid off and cook off the moisture until that turns into a syrup. But in order to get that to heat up quickly, we're gonna leave that lid on and keep an eye on both of these, okay? Do not leave those unattended. Remember, you wanna keep stirring this. You do not want this to stick to the bottom. There's still plenty of moisture in here, so you don't have to worry about it as much, but you definitely wanna keep an eye on it. And we've probably reduced about a third in terms of the volume in the bowl. It just doesn't seem like it because it's boiling. So there's way more layers, right? And if you look over here, we've got our water bath going. I want to turn that down. But at this stage right here, we're gonna add our vanilla extract. So we're doing three teaspoons of vanilla extract, okay? For every seven cups of apples, three quarters of a cup of sugar, one teaspoon of vanilla extract and one teaspoon of cinnamon or nutmeg or a combination of the both. So I will repeat, seven cups of apples, three quarters of a cup of sugar, one teaspoon of cinnamon, nutmeg or a mixture of the two and one teaspoon of vanilla extract and then just modify that recipe if you go up. We're gonna let this cook off. Our jars are in the oven and we've got another 14 minutes. The bands are down there and now I'm getting ready to go wash the seals. Do not overfill this water bath here because if you do, when you put your jars in, the level's gonna come up, you're gonna make a big mess. I love these silicone tipped ones so the jars don't slip and you need a paper towel to wipe off your lid. We're gonna wear a glove because those jars are still hot. It's a silicone glove, it's great. You gotta have hot jars so you don't crack them when you put them in there or you don't put the hot material in. Give it a stir, thicken it up nice and good and just take your time, fill them up. Slow is fast. And that's a perfectly filled jar right to the bottom of that band. That's where your band is gonna seat. So you have to get that seal seat clean. Next thing you wanna do, you take that, center it on that jar. Take your band, put it on top, and turn it, twist it, okay? That's one. Let's do a few more before we stick them in the water bath. These hold about a cup and a half. Wipe it off. Seal. Band. Want to make sure that's centered. Crank that tight. Next. Now, here's where you take your time. Take your lid off. It's gonna be wet. Key with a water bath is you want the water really hot, but you don't need it boiling. It's 10 minutes in a hot water bath and your jars are gonna be good. Take them out, let them cool off. Uh, after a while, you'll hear a pop, and that is the pressure tab going down, telling you it's created a vacuum and then you know you're good to go. Any jars that don't seal within 24 hours, 
Eat those first, okay? They won't store. They haven't made a seal for some reason. Maybe you didn't clean the lid. Maybe the lid was bad, whatever. Just eat those first. If you're worried about it, stick them in the fridge. Be careful, this water is hot. And you always want to be prepared if this jar cracks, okay? Do not drop it. Nice and slow. Take your time. And as we put each jar in, that water level comes up. And I'll show you that. I've got room in there for one more jar and I'm gonna do it, okay? I'm gonna do one more jar. But what I have to do first is I have to remove some of this water, okay? Get yourself a measuring cup, take out some water and put it in another jar. First thing you wanna do is get that jar ready. All right, now that all the jars are in the water bath, we're gonna set that timer for 10 minutes. 10 minutes and they'll be good to go. Take them out. So there you go, we've got five jars in our water vat. It's hot, an occasional bubble. You don't want it boiling, you want really hot water. What that's doing is sterilizing the contents inside of the jars. And as it cools off, when you pull them out, it'll create a vacuum that seals those jars. And you could store these for up to 18 months. So it's a really easy process. It's just time consuming. Take your time. All right, be careful. We're at the home stretch. You never know if one of these could crack. Be careful, wear a glove. And be careful putting these in because they've cooled off a little bit. Nice and slow. Nice and slow. Last jar for today. That's it. I hope you learned something today. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give me a like. Hit me up with a thumbs up. Reach out. Ask me any questions you want. This is a really good way to prolong your harvest. So it's hard to eat all the apples from an apple tree in a year before they go bad. Eat the best ones, take the rest of them and can them, preserve them, do something else with them, right? Dry them, dehydrate them, anything so you can enjoy those apples all the way through the end of the year until it's next year. It's nice to open up that last jar right when you're pulling apples off of your tree for the next year. It's really cool, it's sustainable. Have a great day. Subscribe if you already haven't. It totally helps me out. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye. This is deadly. Deadly, deadly, deadly. Look at that. Come on.